Welcome to the third module of the Lightweight M2M Academy. From today onwards, things start getting really interesting. So in previous modules, we've seen that Lightweight M2M defines a client to server architecture designed to efficiently communicate data between devices and cloud services. So today we're diving into the communication process and discuss the underlying communication mechanisms of lightweight M2M applications. So let's start with deconstructing the protocols underneath the lightweight M2M standard. If we break down the lightweight M2M protocol, we see that it runs on top of a protocol called co-op or a constraint application protocol. And again, co-op runs on top of UDP by default or TCP when more reliability is required. And then both UDP and, and TCP come with the corresponding security layers, DTLS and TLS. So let's start by talking about UDP versus TCP. Often we prefer UDP over TCP when building IoT applications. Well, why is that? Well, because UDP is quite simple to implement. It doesn't take a lot of bandwidth due to the small header size. It has low latency because it does not has to establish a connection with the server before sending data. And it doesn't require acknowledge, acknowledgements to be received after each transmission but it has some disadvantages as well. So UDP doesn't make sure that your data actually gets delivered. It doesn't have a built-in acknowledgement or the capability to retransmit lost data. So when talking about TCP, before the initial message is sent, TCP sets up a connection between the two endpoints and it keeps track of all the data packets that are sent. And if something gets lost along the way, the missing data packet gets retransmitted. So you get a more reliable service with TCP. But the trade-off is that TCP has a larger overhead, meaning it uses more bandwidth. And it generally introduces more latency than UDP. So you have to weigh those factors depending on your IoT application specific requirements. So the Lightweight End2M standard uses the co-op or constraint application protocol to get the messages from the client to and from the server. I think of co-op as the HTTP protocol, but optimized for resource constraint IoT devices. It's very similar to the REST architecture, which you may know from common web development. So the client or server sends a request and waits a response. And examples of such requests are get, post, put, delete, etc. So COPE is designed to be lightweight using very little overhead due to the small header size. And as we've seen before, it by default, it uses UDP as the underlying transport protocol. But because UDP does not guarantee data delivery, COOP provides message reliability mechanisms. For example, by allowing devices to send unconfirmed or confirmed messages. And the latter needs to be acknowledged by the receiver, which improves the reliability of the data transfer. So Lightweight N2M uses these COOP commands for managing IoT devices and its data. So it's just basically specific implementation of these commands. So as, as we've seen in previous modules, there's, for example, the registration process where the, the end device requests to register to a specific network. And if we deconstruct this request, then we actually see that the device simply sends a co-op post message. And also if the server wants to read a specific resource on the device side, then it, then it can send a co-op get with some additional parameters to retrieve the specific um, sensor values. And a cool feature is that it can also use the co-op get request to observe a specific resource. And this means that when a resource updates its value, for example, after a new sensor reading, the client directly sends an update 
to the server with that new sensor value. Coop is often compared with MQTT, as both protocols promise efficient data delivery for resource constrained IoT devices. And as of today, MQTT is one of the most popular IoT protocols, and it already dates back all the way to 1999. And compared to MQTT, Coop is very young with less than a decade of existence. So MQTT is a published subscribe messaging protocol where, where clients communicate using TCP to a server and the server is referred to as the broker. And each message is sent to an address known as a topic. And the topic can be something like temperature or, or location. And clients can subscribe to one or multiple topics and get notified when new data is received on any of those topics. And due to the published subscribe architecture, communication can happen one to one, one to many, and many to one. So COOP only supports confirmed and unconfirmed messages, but MQTT knows three quality of service levels or QoS. So apart from unconfirmed, which is quality of service zero and confirmed quality of service one, it also knows quality of service two, exactly once. And through a process, which is kind of like a four way handshake, it ensures that the message is only delivered once. Code messages are usually somewhat smaller compared to MQTT messages because it uses UDP instead of TCP. But there's also a variation of the MQTT protocol called MQTT SN, which can also run on top of UDP. So thus far the theory about the underlying communication protocols. So make sure that you also read the theory because there's an additional section that I did not discuss during this presentation about encoding formats. Thank you so much for watching and all the best with the upcoming exercise.